Rolls-Royce is vowing to deliver a big jump in profits. The jet engine maker on Tuesday set a target of over $3.5 billion in operating profit over the medium term. With the ever-increasing requirement for fuel efficiency, jet engines have become larger and more powerful than ever. The General Electric GE9X is the biggest jet engine ever produced. However, Rolls-Royce is taking things to new levels with their Rolls-Royce Ultrafan. This huge engine is a sneak peek into the future. But does this mean that Rolls-Royce is taking over the aviation industry? Just how big is this new engine? Let's find out. Before we talk about how big and strong this new engine is, let's understand why they're making it. For the past 10 years, airplane companies have been working hard to make engines that use less fuel and are nicer to the environment. They're worried about climate change and too much carbon in the air. They want to stop the United Nations prediction that emissions will triple by 2050. Airlines are starting to look into using sustainable aviation fuel. This fuel comes from things like old cooking oil or algae, not from regular oil like before. It's a big change, but it's worth it because it can help cut down on pollution from airplanes. Airbus is taking the lead in using sustainable aviation fuel for all its planes by 2030. This has set off a competition among engine makers like Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce and GE Aerospace. They all want to create engines that are good for the environment and strong enough for the new planes of the future. Not only that, but even companies are teaming up too. We have the CFM International, which is a partnership between GE Aerospace and Safran and International Aero Engines with Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney and others. They're all working hard to be part of this eco-friendly race. Demand is back. It's totally back. Where is supply? We've, we've gone from an unprecedented shock of demand back in 2020 to what we see today, which is an unprecedented shock of supply. Many engines from various companies are now available, showing how they're getting better at saving fuel and being eco-friendly. Pratt & Whitney's PurePower PW1100G engines, especially the PW135GJM type, are a great example. They use 16% less fuel and make 75% less noise, which is impressive. These engines are used in planes like the Airbus A321 Neo. That's not all. There's also CFM International's Leap engines. These ones are also really popular for smaller planes. The Leap 1A engine, introduced in 2016, is a top choice for efficiency and being kind to the environment. It's used in planes like the Airbus A3 Tudiwainio. GE Aerospace also has this really strong engine called the GE9X High Bypass Turbofan Engine. It used to be the biggest jet engine until Rolls-Royce made their Ultrafan. But the GE9X is made just for the Boeing 777X and hasn't been fully tested yet. But what about Rolls-Royce? Well, they have had some tough times in this competition. Their latest engine, the Trent XWB-97, was made in 2014, and now they're working hard to catch up in the engine race. Even though it's Rolls-Royce's strongest engine right now, it was made before people cared a lot about being eco-friendly in aviation. So the Trent XWB-97 powers the longer range A350-1000. So it's a heavier aircraft, so how does it achieve this greater thrust? So through a combination of factors. It's advanced fan dynamics, it's got a higher temperature in its turbine and it has a larger core. And through that it's able to achieve the greater thrust of 97,000 pounds. Rolls-Royce lost a lot of money on the XWB engine project because of COVID-19. Also, they mostly make engines for big planes, but more people want engines for smaller planes now. Now what did Rolls-Royce do about this? They introduced the ultra-fan idea. This was back in 2014. They thought it would be a new engine for planes. But because Airbus and Boeing didn't show much interest, they decided to use it to try out new technologies instead. They started testing the Ultrafan engine at a huge facility in the UK in early 2023. For the first test, they used 100% sustainable aviation fuel. Then, in April 2023, they ran the Ultrafan demonstrator for the first time. What are the notable features of the Ultrafan engine? Well, it's really big. It's even larger than the GE9X, which was the largest engine before. It's so big that 
Its diameter is wider than the body of a Boeing 737 plane. The Ultrafan is 140 inches wide, which is almost 4% bigger than the one before it. That's why it's called the world's largest engine. But it's not just about its size. The Ultrafan could change how we fly because it's more efficient, makes less pollution, and performs better than other engines. So how does the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan operate? Basically, it's a turbofan engine made up of important parts, a fan, compressor, combustor, and turbine. The fan's main job is to suck in air and split it into two parts. One part goes through the middle where it gets squeezed, mixed with fuel, and lit up to make power. Engineers need years to design an airplane engine. The assembly, testing, and mounting come after the design is approved. Some of these engines are so ingenious that they win Guinness World Records. The other part goes around the middle, adding even more power. The ratio between these two parts, called the bypass ratio, is very important because it affects how well the engine works and how loud it is. But that's not all. The Ultrafan has a really high bypass ratio, about 15 to 1. They achieved this by making a big fan and a small core. This not only makes the engine work better, but also makes it lighter and simpler. Also, they added a special gearbox to connect the fan to the turbine. This lets the fan spin at a different speed than the core, which helps it work better. During testing, this gearbox made a huge 64 megawatts of power, breaking a record in aerospace. Another cool thing about the Ultrafan is its fan blades made from carbon titanium. These blades are super strong and light because they're made from a mix of carbon fibers and titanium. They can handle high temperatures and loads while staying resistant to rust and wear and tear. But wait, there is even more cooler stuff. The engine has a special combustor that burns fuel in a way that saves more fuel and makes less pollution. It uses less fuel and more air in the burning process which makes the flames cooler and lowers the amount of nitrogen oxide released into the air. The Ultrafan is really good for the environment and can change to fit different needs. Rolls-Royce says it's 25% better than their first Trent engine and could save up to 20% of fuel on each flight compared to other engines. Well, the 10 is, stands for thrust, efficiency and new technology. And this is the latest iteration of the Trent 1000 with some significant technology improvements. So there's a plethora of new technologies in the Trent 1010. We've got new Trent XWB style compressors. We've got a HP system, a cooling air system that's modulated for greater performance. Plus, it could cut down on nitrogen oxide emissions by almost 40%, helping to make the air cleaner and it's estimated to make 35% less noise than Trent engines and hardly make any non-volatile stuff that can hurt people's health. The Ultrafan can be used on a lot of different planes, which is a really big deal. It can make anywhere from 25,000 to over 100,000 pounds of thrust, so it can work on all sorts of planes, from small ones to really big ones. This is very important for Rolls-Royce because they want to do better in the market for smaller planes. So here's the thing, how do you truly grasp the power of the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan? We have to compare it briefly with other potent engines in the market. First up is General Electric's GE9X engine. It's a big turbofan engine with a fan that's 134 inches wide. It has a special feature called bypass ratio of about 10 to 1 and can push with a force of 110,000 pounds during takeoff. It's about 10% better at using fuel than the engine before it, called the GE90. The GE9X holds the record for pushing the hardest at 134,000 pounds, making it the strongest jet engine in the world. Then there's Pratt & Whitney's PW1100GJM, which powers the Airbus A321 Neo. Its fan is 81 inches wide, and it has a bypass ratio of 12.5 to one. It can push with a force of 22,000 to 33,000 pounds. It's 16% better at using fuel than the engine before it. Next, there's the Leap 1A engine by CFM International, also for the Airbus A32A Neo. Its fan is 78 inches wide, and it has a bypass ratio of 11 to 1. It can push with a force of 23,000 to 35,000 pounds. It's 15% better at using fuel and releases 50% less nitrogen oxide, which is a type of pollution 
meeting the standards set by the International Civil Aviation Organization. How does the ultrafan surpass these three engines? It surpasses them in fan diameter, bypass ratio, fuel efficiency, emissions reduction, and adaptability. Only the GE9X is stronger, but what's really important is that the ultrafan is ready for the future. It can run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel right from the beginning. That means it's set to be good for the environment for a long time. The Rolls-Royce Ultrafan has a bright future ahead, even though it's dealing with some problems. It's better than other engines in a lot of ways, like how well it works and how good it is for the environment. But it's pricey, costing around 30 million each, which is more than a lot of other engines. Also, it's taking longer to finish making it, and we're not sure how people will feel about it when it's done. But is the delay a bad thing for Rolls-Royce? No, it might actually be in their favor. Boeing and Airbus don't have any new planes almost ready to come out. This gives a chance for the Ultrafan to get popular before the next batch of planes is ready. Also, since more people are traveling again after the pandemic, airlines are using bigger planes a lot. This could help Rolls-Royce sell more of their big engines, like the Trent series, and give them more time to work on the Ultrafan without rushing. That's not all. The problems that Pratt & Whitney had with their PW-100 GJM engines show how important it is for airplane engines to be reliable and high quality. This could be good news for Rolls-Royce because they're still working on making the Ultrafan better. If other companies keep having issues like Pratt & Whitney did, it could give the Ultrafan a chance to shine in the future. Rolls-Royce is moving forward steadily with its plans. The Ultrafan is almost ready at their UK facility. It did its first tests on the ground in Gloucestershire in November 2023. This year, it's expected to do tests in the air on a Boeing 747 in Arizona. Rolls-Royce wants the Ultrafan to be officially certified by 2027 and start being used in planes by 2030. What is Rolls-Royce's goal? Well, they want to change everything about flying. The Ultrafan is very efficient, works better than other engines, and cares about the environment. Rolls-Royce is also looking into using hybrid electric and hydrogen power, which could make flying even cleaner. These plans match up with Rolls-Royce's goal to make four times more money by 2027 by making better engines and spending less money. Rolls-Royce wants to use their strong position in the market for big planes, but they also want to take advantage of chances to sell engines for smaller planes, like the Ultrafan. Their plans for the Ultrafan are big, but it makes sense because it could change how we fly in the future. We'll have to wait and see if the Ultrafan really does change flying, or if it runs into problems like some other engines before it. Do you think Rolls-Royce's new engine will be a major success? Will they take over the aviation industry? We'll love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.